it's bars and beyond The stars is aligned Sports, relationships, and rap They said it would be hard to combine Part in the shine Pick a mountain, we find the largest to climb What's good, people? It is another episode of Bars and Beyond with me, DeMarco. I am Courtney Levitt. And we back in the building to give y'all some more dope topics to talk about this week. Per use. Per use. Per use. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Same old same. How was your week? How was this past week for you? This past week was, I don't know, I don't know, because what, what, like, we had, first of all, are the kids ever going to go back to school? Man. In Georgia? <laughs> Hey, I seen this funny meme of this lady, this chick from Atlanta. She was like, she wanted to salute all the teachers. Mm -hmm. She was like, teachers, I salute y'all because I didn't know my kids was this bad. And they eat this, but she got a son. He was like, she was like, man, this nigga eats every 20 minutes. Uh -huh. <laughs> She's like, I don't know my kids. I'm just, a, I'm a weekend mom. She's like, I'm really just a weekend mom. I don't know them. Because she didn't been home with him all week long. Because, you know, you got to work them nine to five. So the... You know what I mean? So she was like, man, it was so I funny the way she was saying. <laughs> I don't, I, I don't know, know them. <laughs> Shout out to her. I can't think of her name, but that shit was hilarious. For that real. is funny because no, like really, I've been very active on my Facebook lately. That's how I know I'm getting old because I'm like heavy on Facebook. Right, right. And like all my friends who have kids are like, oh my god. The schools are closed again. Yeah, oh my like, God, somebody, even if they want to come babysit my kid. No, no, no. Somebody was like, oh, dang, it's too late in the day. And they were like, no, no, no. You can still come. You can still come to school. Still, <laughs> you can still come. <laughs> and then I have my friends that are teachers, and they're like, we out of school again, y'all. Man. <laughs> and they're like, they're living the life. We're like, yep, we out of school again. And we still get winter break, we still fall break, break, summer break. Oh, we still get paid. And still we got to deal with your bad ass kids. And so. we got to deal with your bad. Only good thing for the parents is they ain't got to pay that after school and mm -hmm. care and daycare shit cause well you know some daycares still make them pay because they pay bi-weekly they pay for what so like you every week. Oh, pay for the week if you pay that's... on friday for that week that you're not gonna true. be like so here you go your here your money back, back. Oh, no. it's already a done deal yeah no and if they kids as bad as what they appear to be Ooh, man ain't nobody giving back no money nah, that's so. a wrap. they're like no we need that yeah I, just... I don't know i don't know my week was cool though i guess like i had to work extra at work you know no. But uh, other than that, it was a nice snowy weekend, and then today is 65 degrees. Right. It just, our stuff is real, bi it's real bipolar out here. Welcome to We're global warming. Of the, yeah, yeah, literally, global literally. Warming. We got a topic that <clears throat> is probably the number one topic in the history of rap, I think. I would probably say it's the number one topic, or uh, debate is what I mean to say. Not topic, debate yes. in the history of rap. And we both uh, have our opinions, and and you know our, our production team has his opinion, and I'm sure y'all have y'all opinions. So we oh, want y'all yes. to oh, yes. tune in, leave yeah. comments, <laughs> say whatever, because this is this always gonna go down in history as the biggest debate ever. And that debate is, who is the best rap artist, the Notorious Big or Tupac Shakur? What do you think, Courtney? <laughs> Everybody already knows. <laughs> like, I can't, like, literally when I read the fact that this is what we're going to talk about. Uh, I love it. I love this. I'm here for this. I'm not I'm here. here for I'm not here for it. And that's my favorite phrase. Like, I'm here for it. I am here for it. I am not here for this. I got that from you, Courtney. Is that what you got that from? I got that from you. See, if you just agree with me, things would be so much better for your life. I'm telling you, my God. Whenever I hear it, I know it's Pac. Okay, so this is my thing about Pop. Right, all right. Uh, oh, I love that just break my mind. I love Pop. Uh, I was just in the club reciting Pop's rhymes, like you know, on the you, this record, right? I think I, 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 I uh oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> but you can tell me why you love yeah. Pop. I mean, Pause break. Right. We gotta go through a break. <laughs> <laughs> there is no break on this. <laughs> no, but why do you love Pop? So I love Pop because, like, the you see, thing I got about, you to say you love Pop. Yeah, right? yeah, that was good. I'm good. That was good. But basically what it comes down to, he was the guy that, out of all the rappers in the history of rap, to me, I think he was able to tap into people's emotional side more than any other artist ever. I always say, and you know, me and Hood talk about this all the time, from the lyrical ability standpoint, I always feel like Big is the, like, like way above him. But as far as being able to grab people's emotions, 
it was pop. He would make you, if you talked about your mo his mama, everybody starts sending their mama roses and taking them to the grocery store mm -hmm. and all of that, right? You, you talk about you I get around. Do. When I get around, now the dudes want to start hollering at all the chicks in the club. They say, if you say, fuck the police, niggas is shooting at the police, right? So he literally was like more of a, uh, a, a civil rights leader. <laughs> what? I'm just I'm saying Did the truth. Say he, was he was more civil of a rights? civil rights leader, oh activist, like voice for the for the no no no. He was he was more of a civil rights leader oh. or an activist or a voice for the people. He was better at that, I think, than an actual like artist. And he was a dope artist, but I think he was better at that. <laughs> Big was strictly a dope artist. You feel me? Now he might not have been as deep as Pop. Did you just say this man was a singer? Yeah, he was a singer. He would have been the president. He would have been like the Malcolm X of our generation. Do you agree with that? No. You don't agree with that? You, his voice? No. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. No, I don't agree with you. He, this is ridiculous. He was, he was the voice of the people. Like he was the real voice. Like he's the guy that you will go up if you wanted somebody to talk for for any kind of up movement that was going on in the black community, he'd be the number one person that we would've went and got, right? That, that one big thing. Now he made dope music, oh I say God. that. But <laughs> that was, he was better at that than he was at being an artist. <laughs> And I fuck with Pac. What are you drinking? Nah, I'm, 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 I'm strictly sober, but like you that's... You strictly? What was in there every day? <laughs> you got something from all I don't know what the hell they put it. A civil rights leader? Yeah. Are was, you kidding me? Yeah, he was like a... He was like a... Civil rights? He was like the streets version of like uh, Al Sharpton. Dang. But like the streets version, like where everybody, <laughs> but people fucked with him though. You know what I'm saying? And he was a... He was yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but he, his catalog was dope. I mean, he, he could rap. I'm not saying he was a whack rapper. So he's a better civil rights activist than rapper. No, he was nah, nah. Okay, I was saying that. Let me clarify. Yeah, this. come on, please. Let okay. me clarify. Help this. me understand. I don't think that he was an actual. I'm putting him in, mm -hmm. to give you an example context. of what he were in context. What he reminded me of. He I was guess. more of the person that if something we needed our voice and we needed people to understand where we was coming from. I would have chose Tupac over any art music artist I could but ever think of. But why is it not just like N.W.A.? Ever. Because N.W.A. The, spoke about injustices. They did, but not their music. But not as good as Pac. Pac was the best ever at that. But he was the but, best ever at that. I would give him that, but that doesn't make him an act a, a civil rights leader. <laughs> like, <laughs> like that doesn't make that doesn't take away from his ability to be an entertainer nah, it, don't. it didn't trump that it wasn't a great characteristic of a man using his platform which most artists should be doing if you mm -hmm. have a platform and people are listening to you mm -hmm. what better way That's to actually true. change some stuff than to use your voice as an artist mm -hmm. because That's people true. like you as an artist no i mean I, so, but, but and, and and he was the most influential artist ever too I, I Right, but that was because of his voice. It wasn't because of his music. It was more because of who he was off the camera, off the uh, it out was, the booth. No, it was more from the music. No, it was more because he did it through the music. He did it through movies, also though. He did wow. Bishop, Juice, Juice. He he was in Poetic Justice, Juice, uh, Above the Rim, all classic. He was in yeah, all that classic wasn't black movies, movies back. Then. Yeah, but that wasn't where the uh, the uh, the loyalty came in to. You know what I'm saying? Pac through like the loyalty and the shit came through is when he gave us two pockets now, and it was trapped, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, violent. They claim that I'm violent yeah, yeah. just because I refuse to yeah, be silent. You right. know what I'm saying? It was like, damn, this nigga hard as fuck. But, but and, and, I agree and it was that. through the music. But but through that music, okay. You then that. he was like, one nigga, you scared to shoot a nigga, but you scared to pop a cop type shit. And right. then a nigga start busting. And nigga start busting, busting that cop. You know what I'm saying? That but, was his voice, right? Yeah, yeah. Through but I'm saying through the music. I'm saying it was but, through the music. I get that. It was through the music. And the music, so the music, the music was so good. fucking no, hard. No, I never said the music wasn't so you good. You think big music was better? I just think Big's music was Why? better. I would Hell rather no. Why? music. His music was better because the actual songs put together was better to me, and the bars was better. I'm a bar guy, so lyrically. You can't tell me that me against the world. 
That's a classic that album. That's Big got album. one. What's one album Big got that's better than me against Ready the world? Ready to Die was better than me against the world. What? Yes. what? yes. Do we need to go song for song on this shit we right now? Yes. Can we play some snippets? And, yes. And, 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 yes, we can. And who had the biggest songs on their album in those two? Out of those two, like like selling wise, selling like off oh, those albums. No, Tupac sold all his records on that double disc. Uh, Ready to Die outsold me against the world. It was that double well, disc and the disc I, before that. But Biggie wasn't even out. But Biggie wasn't even out when that was out. Yes, in '95, Me Against the World came out in '95. Ready to Die came out in '94. They both '94. Ready to Die came out in '94. They came out at the same time, bro. Okay. Yes, facts. Okay, yes, we, we, can look, we, can, we can Google that. It's 94, ready to die. To, I thought. Let's Google. Yeah, Google. And, and me against you might the world. Be right. Yeah, and so so they were the same time. But, that's when the shooting happened. But it happened. wasn't touching that. You tried to, ready to die wasn't better than no motherfucker oh, me against the man, world. That was, and I love ready uh, oh, uh, me my against God. the world. But ready to die was banging. Okay, okay. So if you put that against. Okay, so what you put against Thug Life? Uh, I don't have. I can't go past like with Big. Hard. I can't put nothing against Thug Life because that was really his only album. All I could do is put the double disc against. Okay, so I give what you, you put against I give strictly it. for my niggas. Strictly for my niggas, bang. Now I give you this. Come though. on, ready for the world. Oh, ready for the world. Nineteen ninety-five, right? Ninety-five. Thank you. Me and and ready, <laughs> ready, ready, ready to die was ninety-four. But Who I sold you this. more records. Of course, pop because he had more. He had more content. No, no, I'm talking between them two. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's let's see what sold the most. But this is my thing. I'm gonna tell you. Now, double disc wise, I like Pac's double disc more than I like Biggie's. I give y'all that. I give y'all that. But Pac had already had the streets by the time he had already had the streets. Um, and and that double disc. Me was, against the world oh, came out. Yeah, he did. He did. But but Pop, but Biggie had ran that summer. That summer when Me Against the World came out, Biggie put out the uh, uh, No More. Uh, I mean, One More Chance remix. Pac he ran the whole music, summer though. He did, but it hit. He, he, it's no he, comparison. I don't even know how this I'll, is the, a, the, a comparison. You see, I'm over here like, I'm going to just be the Google person because I yeah. Just, yeah. Yeah. He lost me at Civil Rights. <laughs> so I'm going to tell you what it is. <laughs> Pac had the streets as far as people fucking with Pac for who he was. Yes. But Big, but Big had the radio stations and the music and the actual, like, the music yeah. part of it. Can you agree? Like, people was fucking no, with Big's Pac music. No, the music part. He did, but he had the, the real life shit more than that. People fucked with Pac for who Pac was more. They liked his music, and that's why I try to get people to see. He had great music. I'm great not saying, music. I don't think but so. But his personality and who he was cool. intrigued people more than his music. What Biggie song is better than music. Soldier Story? Like, that was a banger. God damn. Yeah, it was a banger, but when y'all did we gotta pull up some snippets. Courtney Levette loves Pac as a person. Right. I love Pac as an artist. But and is he, it close? And he was fine. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and <yeah>. he was <laughs> fine. <laughs> but no, like, you, you I, love, I love him as an artist, but I also love him for his voice. Now, and understand his Through voice. his music. Right, now, like, now understand it from an um, emotional attachment standpoint, because he had that voice and who he was, wouldn't that make you draw more to him than somebody who was strictly just a rapper and an artist, and that's all yeah, he that's was? Yeah, that's in a comparison. Yeah. That's, because that's like I'm saying, but that put Biggie up people. against a rapper, you, you gotta can, put him against, like, now, I, now that's a like good comment. Like or something. Fucking. Not even comments. No, not even comments. Uh, he AZ even. and them niggas. That, exactly. Now, I, that's true. We, it's better to compare Biggie to dudes that was just rappers, really. Like a Nas or somebody like that. Can, I can get you that. compare the two? Because Pac Nas is, and Big? Yeah, compare them two. Mm. That's a good comparison. Mm. Who's better? Ooh. They top three to me. My Who mom. better, though? Ugh. Yeah, put a pressure on his plate. Ilmatic? <laughs> put a pressure on his plate. Y'all put pressure on his plate. Who's better? Why y'all put pressure on his plate? Which one, Biggie or Nas, nigga? Oh, oh that's everybody. That's, that's now, everybody watch this. That's yeah, y'all comment below. Hey, Let's do that. Oh, that's Let's big pressure. That. Them two dudes really is the reason why I rap. So, okay. Mm -hmm. Who you going with? I'm going to go, ugh. Damn, man. See how quick a nigga be? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right after this. I love Big. Okay. Nice. I, I might have to go with Nas. I might have to go. And oh, I'll fuck, yeah. okay. over Big. Hold on, wait a minute. So if you pick uh, Nas over Big, would you pick Nas over Pac too? As a musician. That's what I'm saying, guys. It's nah, all listen. musician. It's nah, only listen, musician. Listen, listen. This is what I'm only saying. Music. Nas, music. Nas goes head down against Pac. Musically, musically. I think Nas was better than Pop, but in overall, yeah, he didn't pick the right beats. Nah, his beats wasn't all banging. His beats wasn't all, but he was a better rapper. No, but I feel it's like a better flat out rapper than him. Hell no. When I, I and I love Nas, 
Hold on, we gotta pull up some songs. Pull up some songs. When you spit some songs. Spit some songs. Say some songs. What I'm saying is, when you look at Nas, like in his career, mm-hmm. Nas. Let's pull up a Nas. Song somebody too. in the conversation is about to rip me apart for saying this. I feel it. <laughs> but I almost want to compare Nas, not rapping, but I'm just saying <laughs> career in general. Mm-hmm. Nas reminds me of the old school version of what Fab is. And, like, you know how Fab has, what, one album? Uh, but everybody knows him. <laughs> everybody love him. But it's just like, you just literally just here. You're just coasting. And I feel like for Nas to be Nas, mm-hmm. why are you not like a J? Why are you not I like Diddy? you hear me? Why if you not, you know what oh I'm saying? Like, <laughs> now, I, I can't say you know what what I mean? bad beat selection. Lecture. Beat selection. Who out of like, liquor? Nah, he has some, but now I mean, I, I think Tracked. it's what I let me let, let me clarify something to y'all, y'all in the audience. Like sometimes the nostalgia of me, I, I came up strictly skill wise, right? Mm-hmm. So sometimes I get so caught up in somebody's skill level that I don't put the whole totality of the song together, right? Yeah. So maybe Pac had better songs than Nas, mm-hmm. and I, I I don't even know why. I'm, now I got to I got to take a step back and say, damn, am I really? trying to compare music wise like I know Pac had better songs mm-hmm. but I like to listen to Nas's lyrics more you see what I'm saying skills. you understand what I'm saying yeah, yeah, the yeah. technical but see, skills and, but, and that's Maybe why that's I mean, like some, are, some artists you just can't compare them to each other because the style right. is so different technical like you skills. knew you could get technical skills you could it. get Pac and you can hear a, a joint where it's like oh I can play this around my mama or I can play this and have self confidence. Or I can play this and go want to shoot a nigga. Or mm-hmm. I can hear this. Like, and go I wonder if Heaven got a ghetto songs like it's, that. Like, he had so yeah. many different variations like, of damn. music. Yeah. It so worked for tears. so many different yeah. people. But when you look at somebody like Nas, it's the or homies like call. Even, all right, track list. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna start calling you track list. But when you try to compare him to somebody like Nas and Big, where it's literally this is all I rap about, and this is my lane, like. You said it. I want to say when you were saying like in order to be an artist, you have to be well versed all the way around. You That's have true. to be able to kind of cross over mm-hmm. and have you know another genre like you. That's true. That's true. Nas and Big. I don't even think Big would have ever done that. I could never have seen Big being anything other than a street rapper. That's true. Nah, I give you that. I can't debate with that because everything from day one was straight street grimy. He didn't even want to make the songs that blew up the most for him. He didn't even want to do that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I give you that. So maybe for me, that's why I put them. I went, when I had these debates, I'm looking more from the technical wordplay because that's what I came up on and that's what I like. But for somebody that didn't come up as that being their main focus on a song, mm-hmm. I get why somebody would say Pac or like he had, somebody. Pac had good beats, he had a good yeah, message. Yeah. Like, there were so <clears throat> many different things and I can't say that somebody who only is going to talk about one thing is better than that <laughs> snippet. Hey, and, 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 yeah, and, yeah. and that, for instance, that beat... That was uh Eric Sermon did that beat from EPMD. That was a straight East Coast beat. You know what I'm saying? So I, I get, it was a banger. You know what I'm saying? It was a banger. So, I mean, I don't know. I you don't know. know. <laughs> Go ahead and say that Pac is better. Yeah, you hear it? See the guests can't, they can't hear it on the, on YouTube though. What was the name of that? First, was it? What was the name of that first joint on uh on Me Against the World? What's the name He's of just that? He's gonna keep turning nah. it up. <laughs> <laughs> we. For everybody in the audience tuned in, <laughs> it's the very first track on uh, Me bars. Against the World. And bars. So I had to put some bars on the video. We like bars. The first track on uh, Me Against the World Pac had with uh, Eric Sutton. If Sutter I Die Tonight. Me. If I Die Tonight. Yeah. It was a banger. Yeah. It was a banger. <clears throat> but um, it, that's what it is. I mean, it's I'm always, I'm always go, you know, with the bars, but I get it. I understand. I understand. But going back to what I said in the beginning, and I stand firm with this, he would be a... Our biggest voice in the community right now, especially with social president. media. I agree with that. With, with yeah. meme, with social media. There's never yeah. been a black people president. Oh yeah, he would be <laughs> the number one guy. You yeah. feel me? I so that's that. that's why I, where I got the civil. I mean, actual civil I rights. Know. Yeah. He damn right. After I seen that one video he did when he went in there and talked to them older black people, and he was like, oh, "I'm only twenty niggas. Y'all supposed to be doing this shit." I'm like, yeah, <laughs> man. That's some real shit. <laughs> <laughs> like, damn, I mean, but not right. for real. Like, like, give it to him wrong. Yeah, <laughs> I don't care. Yeah, so that he had that in him, and and I think 
that and overall, and we're gonna go to the next thing, but overall, I think even though his music was excellent, I'm not debating that. Yeah, but I why think did people voice, try to play his music his, though? Like it wasn't the hardest shit ever though. That's what I'm trying to Because understand. I think his his personality and who he was outside of music ended up being bigger, yes, bro. I do. Music. Let's be honest. He, his his person, who he was, his person outside, yeah. outside of music, it ended up trumping. He got the busting at the police. Yeah. And everything. He became a hero though. It was like. Yeah, he yeah. became, he became a black one of them, hero, like, like a real... Like, like, because we was, like, living. He was, like, the voice. I think people who missed that air, it might be kind of hard for them to grasp what was actually going down. Like, I think I was around, what, um, 15, 16, yeah, maybe? Too. Yeah, around that time. Somewhere mm -hmm. around there. Mm -hmm. And everything he was rapping about, man, like, we was going through, like, running from the police, fighting the police, oh, busting at the bang, yeah. gang banging. <laughs> <laughs> right. It was, real. It was, it was like, real. bang banging. He was really, like... He was speaking to Standing you. Standing up, they could like <laughs> shoot the cops back. Yeah. Nigga, fuck that. He was yeah. speaking to like, you. It was like, it was like mm -hmm. in the heat of it. And yeah. then he had the, the fucking president start coming down on him. And it was yeah. like, damn, this nigga going through some shit. Yeah. And you he was you still going. Nigga when the yeah. President yeah. yeah, they even was like, still doing. Then yeah. the next week we hear, he uh, he shot two police officers. And we like, yeah. damn, this is this yeah. nigga. Fuck all these motherfuckers. And, and, this, and this is why. Like, he really and, rapping it and living it. And like. he's really living it. And this is why. He, Damn, I said that. He came like a folklore. Who he was. He's a folklore. <laughs> he's an urban legend. He out and preceded his music. Because I was at a party September uh, 13th, 1996. I was at a party, uh, a college party. 80% mm -hmm. white people there. We rocking out somebody's birthday. Uh, like all colors, shapes, and sizes was in there. Mm -hmm. The news came on at 11 p.m. news. Uh, we was in Florida. Tupac Shakur has just died. 17, you know, he was talking about it on the news. Our own God, literally everybody in there damn near came to tears. All colors, all everything, like white people, like uh, <laughs> Asian, like, everybody could think of. It was all, it was like, it was like brother, damn, this so a nigga. Like, so he talked to us on the street side, the niggas that was out in the field, but he also, they also felt it. And that book, that, so that's what sticks in my mind more than his music. I'm going to be totally honest. Maybe that's my experience. Mm -hmm. But All the right. fact that he had that effect on these people right. that had no real connection with him, but they was crying besides, like that was his besides, family. Like that was a family besides member. Besides the music. When it was I giving shit like, it was part uh, of Brenda's it. got a baby. Yeah. Or motherfucking keep your head up. Yeah. Like, who was giving them niggas them yeah. songs like that? The motherfuckers was really hitting your soul. Yeah. And, and that's they, what they don't really understand. Like, it'd be like, it'd be a connection be with a the connection. music. That's yeah. what it is. Like, damn, I that feel. That blew me away. Like, I mean, I cried when Leah died. Nah, she was, she was <laughs> another one, though. So, you know what I'm saying? Damn. Yeah. <clears throat> but, um, I remember that day, too. <laughs> wow. That was, that your was best. a bad day. That was yeah. a bad day. Yeah. I think it was hard. It would be kind of interesting to see what she would be doing around now. Around now. There would be no Beyonce, let's just say uh, that. Yeah, Sorry, Beehive. No, well, I, a lot of people say she slid in it. She just like how Jay did with Big. They, they say Aaliyah slid. I mean, uh, nah, Beyonce slid. That was like way after, wasn't it, right? Nah. Nah, it was. They, Aaliyah died in 99? Yeah. And, and Beyonce, Destiny's Child was like 2001. <laughs> Boom. Phenomenal, phenomenal. Yeah, what was the one song? Uh, the call was somebody was. Uh, they, uh, say my name. Say my name. Stuff like that. Came that was in like 2000. Yeah. Yep. And it but, was um, right. Yeah, there's a there's an MTV like video awards where Aaliyah and Beyonce like Aaliyah was interviewing Beyonce. That's interesting. Yeah. So she slid right on in there and took the spot. Yeah. But you know that's what they tried to make Ashanti the new Aaliyah. That didn't work. So. Yeah, it didn't. and she had her little with, with Ja Rule at that time was hot, so but that she was. She can't the, sing, nah. and it be killing me because she be on tour, and I be like, "What are you singing?" <laughs> <laughs> She's singing all Ja Rule songs for real. I guess. Whatever. Yeah. Anyway, that's what we're gonna Pocket's do. best, so we're gonna move on. <clears throat> we're gonna move to. <laughs> We hey everybody leave their comments so we can this one goes on forever. We might end up revisiting this somewhere down the road. You know what I'm we saying? don't need to. <laughs> so right, we go ahead and close that. We go we go we go skip it. over uh we're gonna skip over something today. We're gonna go into the Grammys for this okay. week. Okay. So what's so up with the Grammys? Imagine being on a radio station and boom, you become famous overnight. That wins our Grammy. The Grammy goes to yeah, this right. apparent like I don't know where this saying came from or where this meme came from but mm -hmm. like everybody is booming everybody now. everybody it's like oh imagine having your girlfriend and then boom now you don't <laughs> or it's like wait what i told somebody i was like well, i forget what i said whatever anyway but boom 
it's the Grammy for this week, and I hope it goes away next week. Yeah, it's like because whoa. I can't deal with another person saying, "Imagine anything," or or "Boom, nothing else." <laughs> I don't, I don't care. I don't care. Everybody I don't, doing. I mean, it's they literally right like outlandish stuff. Like I could probably pick my phone up and find one like that fast. Oh yeah, it's... Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Get it. Yeah, the good part about this this time frame though is that stuff come and go so fast. It's like just winter the storm for about yes. a couple of days but I'm just, and then it's I like can't. two three years ago almost <laughs> like literally i can't i can't scroll it's just like and it's like you can't not read it uh-huh. like you have to read it right and after right. you read it i'm like Hey, <laughs> because uh, it's everywhere. It's you like, can't get away from it. I don't want to read so, it anymore. Please stop. We're we ready for the next one. We're ready for the Please. next thing. Bring yeah. Kermit back. <laughs> that was fun. Bring Kermit back because I'm, I'm so, I'm here for, yeah, yeah, I'm here yeah, for the yeah. alter Kermit egos. I'm that, here that. That Kermit was epic for real. Yes. Leave that the boom. Epic. Bring back Kermit. So we're about to get into another really, really crazy topic that has <laughs> always been a big one, and I'm seeing it at an all-time high now, so I got to speak on this first, and I'm going to let uh, Courtney LeVette speak on it. Mm-hmm. There is a very huge influx of alpha women, right? And because of this influx of alpha women, which unfortunately they have been kind of backed into this situation mm-hmm. because the baby daddy ain't shit or got locked up or no mm-hmm. support system from the family, whatever the case may be, they end up uh, raising, being a single parent and having right. a way to raise their kids and there's a lot of times where it's boys. Right. So their boys have only seen a woman go get the bag and bring it home, do all the different things that maybe I'm the so man terrible. was supposed to be, to do. You just said that and all I heard was I get the bag and flip it into a <laughs> <laughs> Hey, that's hey, that's right I'm in the sorry. Movie, I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> sorry. Hey, but that's what them women were saying. Them single moms okay. telling their sons, like, I get the bag and flip it into a You feel me? My bad. <laughs> <laughs> so, so basically... If this little boy sees a woman do all the same stuff that a man is supposed right. to do in the household, plus the woman stuff also, they get kind of programmed to make that an excuse to draw to a woman when they get older mm-hmm. in a relationship and expect for that woman to kind of run the show, pay all the bills, not even 50-50, right. pay all the bills, hold them down, throw them a pack to try to do chase their dreams but the mm-hmm. dreams fall apart real quick and then they got to pay you know the woman has to pay the penalty for right. it so it's really hurting our community because what's happening is it's creating a lot of baby boys mm-hmm. a lot it's the jody factor mm-hmm. there's a lot of baby boys out here that don't know how to go get it on their own because they wasn't shown the path by a real man so what you think about that <laughs> Let me just start by saying my old co-worker still call my ex Jody. Oh. To this day, they be like, where's oh. Jody at? Oh. <laughs> and if his mom or dad, I love y'all. <laughs> and if his brother hears this, I love you so my little brother. I just, I had to break up with all y'all. <laughs> oh, wow. But no, like literally, like, I'm paying bills in my house, in my apartment. I'm giving him money at his apartment. He driving, well, then we ended up moving in together, and I'm paying a lot. He not working, and I'm just like, bro, you got to get a job. And then he ends up getting locked up. It was, have you ever seen The Honeymooners? Uh, talking with about Cedric the Entertainer. And Cedric the Entertainer. Right, it was always, ooh, ooh, I got an idea. It's going to make us some money. Like the get rich quick <laughs> scheme type people. Yes. Oh, my God, that's him. I want to start a hair business. You don't know shit about hair. What are you selling hair? Where are you getting the hair from? Do you know about density? Do you know about length? Do you know about color? Do you know about texture? Nah, but my cousin a hairstylist, so she gonna help me. <laughs> we looking for a business. We looking for an office. Um, he used to drive me to work every day. And mind you, we lived in Norcross. I worked in Cobb County. So that's really some Jody. Like um, Jody. Oh, oh. And he had great parents. His parents told me to break up with him. What? Yes. Like, he would drive me to work, drop me off, and then come back and pick me up. Literally, Norcross to Cobb, Cobb back to Norcross, what? Norcross to Cobb, Cobb back to, like, every day. Oh. Oh, but that, the kicker is, the nigga would be late picking me up every day. Oh. And then have an attitude that I have an attitude, I'm ready to go, you in my car. Like, found condoms in my car, earring oh. in my car. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah, so Jody's really So exists. how did you get in that situation? Let's yeah. go back. Let's rewind. How yeah, did this? That, 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 how did this happen? Yeah. <laughs> when did well, you notice I the him, sign? I was I, when I met him. I was seventeen. Oh, so we were kids. Show. He was in. Oh, he was a. He was a 
He just liked college. He was, just one, of those, he was just one of those guys he just liked. He just liked. Well, when I was 17, he just liked him. Yeah, 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 you know, he just liked him, so it didn't really. We kind of was on and off during college because, you know, he was cheating. <laughs> when I went to college, he was cheating. He's so, an older guy. No, he's only a year older than me. Oh. Yeah. So, you know, he cheated. We came back. Mm-hmm, man. You know how that goes. You know how we are, women. We, okay, you're sorry. All right. Mm-hmm. Then you still cheating. You still fucking up. So, you know, once you've invested a lot of time in a person, it's like, <laughs> damn it, like, you want to you you leave, but then it's like, you have so much potential. You have a whole college degree, but, like, he lost his job, and he, the school he was getting his master's at, he lost their accreditation, so he was just, like, okay. going through a, a spell, but I'm like, nigga, go get a job. So that was one of them hold you down moments. Type. I tried. Yeah. But yeah, then okay. he got mad because he was trying to keep me well down. I'm like... Nigga, go get a job at Kroger. I don't, I don't care where you work. Bag just get a job. Yourself. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Like, sure. you not even do I feel like I shouldn't have to do that because I got a degree. Well, bitch, you ain't got a job right now. And I need <laughs> you to have one. I can literally, he woke me up at 5. No, I would never get this shit. <laughs> he woke me up at 5 o'clock in the morning. I had to be at work at like 7. And this is before he was out of my car. Hmm. Woke me up at 5 o'clock in the morning. Baby, you were still going to let me borrow them $5 so I can go play ball with my friends. <laughs> Oh, wow. It's five o'clock in the fucking morning. Bro. Get the fucking five dollars out my purse. That's exactly what I said. <laughs> That's exactly what I said. I was, I was so mad. I was like, it's in my purse, nigga. Lock my door when you leave. Like, did you really wake me up and ask me Thanks, for five dollars to go play basketball with you? Thanks, Thanks, babe. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Thank you, babe. Get away from me. Get away from wow. me. Go play basketball. Are they going to hire you with this damn shit? Right, right. Shit. So, man, the shit we but you know, go honestly, I don't. I told y'all I got certain days, but I don't attribute the baby boy or the alpha female. I don't attribute that to us. That mm. all started back in the 50s when, okay, slavery's over. We can't really enslave them. Okay, cool. <laughs> What you trying to figure out where I'm going with this? <laughs> yeah, yeah that, me too. Wait, wait, wait. I'm curious. Um, I'm curious. So okay, then it became okay. Well, we can't enslave them. So how can we get the black men out the house? So then it became okay. Well, we got the crack game. Boom! Now you're doing drugs and you're either dying or you're getting locked up for selling the drugs. So now what does a woman have to do? My nigga's dead or my nigga's in jail. What do I do? And who put the drugs? In the community. Hell, none of us was flying to fucking uh, Columbia to get it. Right, but it still comes down to sound like there's not a man in the house, though. That, But I'm saying it's not it, it's not the woman's fault that she has had to become the alpha woman. Oh, no, no, no. And it's no, just it's evolved. No, I mean, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, so it's just yeah. evolved now <laughs> to where it's almost impossible for women to revert back and say, okay, I can sit at home and I can let him go be a man and do... Like, no, we, niggas fucked up too. We, like, oh, yeah, y'all are. Y'all it's a big part of it. Y'all have now become be black to <laughs> women doing a lot of shit. Like, men be yeah. like, like, I was asked, well, why you couldn't propose to me? And I said, I don't deserve for a man to ask me to marry you. What? Him. So a nigga really asked you mm-hmm. that? You, you would have a problem. And it went to, oh, well, black women would never do that. Oh, but I it was, oh, Spanish this. women will propose and or white women will propose to their man. But I'm like... Yeah, I get it if you really love that person, but I'm like, no, why? I'm like, no, no, I, why, I'm I don't. Like, I don't I, why can't you propose to me? But like, and then that's another thing too. I think you know, dudes be so quick to throw out this. Well, black women won't do this. Black women won't do that. But a lot of black women have been forced to have to do a lot of shit that they never wanted to do in the first place. Mm-hmm. So once happened, what I've seen personally is with independent women that have to be single, and I've mm-hmm. seen it firsthand is that they don't trust no niggas. Because they don't know if the nigga, like, I'll tell you, oh, I'm going to pay this bill for you. I'm going to help you out. We're going to do this together. Nigga disappears. His mm-hmm. phone off. Or you can't contact him. You know what I'm saying? Or yeah. he just dip out. Or you end up always, you depend on them so much. And they keep dr- letting you, they down. Let you down. So yeah. they're like, fuck you from this point on. Right. And it's you know like, oh, saying? you're a bitter black woman. Well, shit, if I am, I kind of got the right exactly. to be. If, you, if I said this, this, this. If, if you went through half of the bullshit that women have went through or black women that have went through and it's like, oh, you loud or you angry or you this or you that. And I'm like, Spanish women are loud. Spanish women are angry. They always angry. Super. White women are angry. Super. White women can be loud. Like, oh, I don't understand how it's, oh, you're black and so now you are. Okay. But anyway, that that I don't went off on a whole. No, other, but that's it, a whole other topic. It comes back around. But yeah. I got a question for you, Courtney Lebet. Mm-hmm. What can black women do 
as a whole to kind of do a better job of kind of reading the kind of man that they're dealing with in the beginning before mm, having a whole signs, baby yeah. by that kind of nigga that puts them in a position to have signs. to be an independent. Being a woman. Pay attention Being a woman, to you signs. know exactly. Our gut is never wrong. I don't care who you are, what age you are. But your gut is never it, wrong. No, and that's, that's yeah, my that's point. Oh, okay, okay. That's okay. my point. Follow your gut. Yeah, absolutely <laughs> follow your gut. Like the second you see... Some anything, it could be the smallest thing that you don't like. Notice it, understand it, and be out. Like we will, we'll let stuff go and let stuff go and let stuff go. And then now it's like shit. It's been six, eight, ten months, and now I really, really like the person. But oh, they do this and it bothers me, and they do this and it bothers me. Right. And if I ask this person about this thing that they do that bothers me, and then they have an attitude about it, now you feel bad for bringing it up because you still kind of like the person. Mm-hmm. So listen to your gut and don't even get involved in this shit. Like when you see the first signs or anything that bothers you, be out. Before you get invested in it and Facts. your feelings all wrapped up. Facts. Yeah, I think I think I would tell some shit I tell my daughter is look at the signs. You know what I'm saying? It's pay always attention. like petty signs, right? Yeah. Like if y'all go out to eat, you don't tip. That's a sign. That's a if sign. He's you know on what I'm the saying? phone the whole time. Yeah. That's a sign. If he um What's another thing that I might throw you off that a motherfucker do? It's a whole bunch of shit. Uh, it sound like let it. me walk by the damn street. That is my yeah. thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, Not open the door for you. Yeah. Little shit. Like, Stuff don't like walk that. in front of me. Like, is, is somebody walking run up behind us and snatch or stab my ass? You mm-hmm. all the way up there. Like, you yeah. can't see nothing. Yeah. It's a lot of little um, um, Like, notice how he interact with his, his mother and his uh, family members. Right. Do you know right. his friends? Those type of shit. Do you know his friends? And if you've been dating this person for six, seven, six to eight months, you haven't met anybody in their family, you haven't met any of their friends? Like, yeah, character. Oh, You gotta yeah. look at the content of the character. And it's comments, to be honest, in this stage of the game, too, with social media the way it is, it's so easy to get any information on anybody mm-hmm. you want to get. Mm-hmm. So if that stuff is held away from you for that long, it's a reason for it. Yeah. And if this ain't dry snitching niggas, it's just a regular conversation. Ooh, or this it is one. what it is. If you're on point, you're on point. Oh. Face down phone. Oh. The face down that's, phone. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. That's a tough one. Is that a sign? I mean, that's kind so, of a sign. Sometimes it's, it's kind of a, it's, 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 I'm guilty of that. Yeah. I mean, because sometimes, like, I'll do it all the time. Now? I might put my phone down all the time. What, that is, way. It, what is that a sign now? Let's put it out there. You, you probably don't want that text to come through while you with your significant other. Ooh. You don't want them to glance and be like, "What? Who is this person that just liked this picture or commented and said this or what's this Facebook mess?" Like, it could be a number of things as to why you flip your phone down. I don't flip know. Flip the fucking phone at all times. <laughs> but you're, you're just so stupid. And, and I, I'm sorry, ladies, because I'm about to give men game because apparently they just be so dumb and blind and shit. Like. There's so many ways if you really, because men are terrible cheaters. Terrible. Y'all are horrible at lying Girl, about not, other women. Yeah, that's not so a lot of times we know and we just be like, this nigga lying to me. And we <laughs> just, <laughs> like, it, it's to the point where we just be like, and you think, and, and right, you go right, home right. and you snuggle up in your bed as a nigga and you think you won, like, huh, she ain't even know. No, nigga, we know. Yeah. 99.999% of the time, we know. And if we don't know, we gonna find out. And this is why we so dumb. We by nature, we mm-hmm. we like we the savage, right? But we we are we do the same shit. We have a we do by nature humans do the same stuff every day. <laughs> right. 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 Competitive right. stuff all the time. So when you do some shit that ain't normal, that ain't out is out of what you normally do, <laughs> fuck up the rotation. Your chick, your chick automatically. <laughs> 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 so you already under investigation from that point on. We, but you don't know it. So you still doing it. <laughs> You definitely uh, like we that. You don't have to investigate it. It could be something as simple as remember was, I was telling you. We were talking about the Facebook shit. It's like, <laughs> we it's talking investigation. About the, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it goes back to like, it, it doesn't even have to be an investigation. Like, we can just notice it. Or you act in funny. Or you trying to be on the phone, but you turning the volume down. Or, or you trying to yeah, end the call. Because we're place. not stupid. Like, first yeah, of all, well, all 90% everybody. of my cousins are guys. So, God, you know, I've seen it all, heard it all. You didn't hit the button, but we can't hit the volume. Like, yo, 
They hit no. it so quick. Like, yeah. Or, wait, wait. The last call, I just heard everything that motherfucker said. This call, and now all of a sudden, I can't hear or shit. you have your, this, this used to kill me. And I would just be sitting there like, Golly. this nigga here. Uh, and I know now why. Because I'm like, this is going to the way that they went now in, in retrospect, he would be on the phone, on speakerphone with like his mom, right? He'd be on speakerphone, think, you know, trying to let you be included in his family conversation. His mom don't even fucking know you exist, though. Yeah. <laughs> on speakerphone, then she asked one specific question. So how's everything going with, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Shit on speakerphone so fast. Yeah, it is. <laughs> like, ah, ah, ah. Fumbling or with that bitch. <laughs> In the call, first of all, yeah, hold on, phone is connected. Hey, hold on. First of all, your phone's connected to your car. I can see the name <laughs> on the phone in the You're car. Like, hold on, hold on, hold on. Like, Damn. That's yeah. my thing. I'd be like, y'all be so stupid. Like, take your phone off of fucking uh, uh, audio. Or, no, what is it? What is audio. the um, yeah. No, Bluetooth. Bluetooth. Bluetooth yeah. Turn off the Bluetooth when you get in the car. Yeah. Listen to the radio. Yeah. <laughs> ah, that that name is going to pop, name up, pop up on the screen. With like, everything, all the info if, right if you there. Get a text Plain message. The music gonna, is gonna quiet down in the car. It's Never like, so me. who just texted you? Right. And, and, and you women know. have unbelievable Never. supersonic ears at the even right when, time. Yeah, right. even when you turn Never. the phone so down. You turn so you can be on the phone. You can be on the phone and not be on speakerphone. What's the regular, saying? regular phone. And and your people's your chick right here. She can hear every word that person's saying. It could be the TV could be up loud. Kids in the background. <laughs> they still hear every Damn. single word. Like how the fuck did you hear that? Oh, we gonna find out. Gonna find out. <laughs> so yes, ladies, trust your instinct. And men, if you go and cheat, if you just gotta cheat, be better. <laughs> I mean, like, it's just, better. At this stage of the game, it's, it, you just gotta keep it. Yeah. Honey, I mean, we don't really want to cheat no more. Because social man, media, really social media is put together to, for for to, to to shut down players. It's not a player friendly. It's not a player friendly platform. It's not a player friendly environment. It's not. <laughs> Get the off. fuck off! Get off! The fact that men are still trying Long on social off, media man. is just like, first of all, you got three girlfriends, bro. Like they gonna find they out about each other out. at some point. Yeah. Like, cause you know, on Instagram, it used to be you could accidentally tap two people' name at the same time when you send in a DM. Oh, really? Got sent two of those. Damn, that's it, crucial. It was a joke. I was just kidding. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was just who is this? Who is this bitch on the other? Who the other girl? So I know you got it twofold because you sent it to two girls at the same time. At the same time. Yeah, ain't that many mistakes in the world. <laughs> <laughs> but did it twice. But did it twice. I was like, oh, that's so cute, babe. <laughs> <laughs> I, I responded in the group. Said, that's so cute, babe. Right. Oh, <laughs> so man. now she looking like, who is this? That's crazy. Who's so, babe? so my main thing is, I'm like. As a woman, now I'm never gonna just don't have no babies with no niggas until you know who that nigga is in real life. Yeah. Because that's yeah. what's leading to all this alpha women and yeah. all the baby boys. Yeah. You don't know who this nigga is until it's too late. <laughs> until you, you, you made that trip to the uh, to the doctor and they're like, You're pregnant. You're too much. And then you, you don't find out you're pregnant. You don't want the late Yeah, facts. <laughs> you don't even like the motherfucker. And you're in the worst shit. Like, and damn. then. Once so you have a baby, then you really don't like it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's, and that's then the, the real, you don't know that nigga till you send that text, that late text text. You don't know who that nigga really is until, 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 you, until what you mean? Yeah, until you say, what hey, you late I'm late. <laughs> that's late when you find out what you're dealing with in real yeah. life. You hear me? <laughs> yeah. 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 And then you'd be like, what, what you mean? Like, late for what? Where you going? What you the need fuck to ride? <laughs> What you trying to do? So what you trying to do? I mean, what you trying to do? What I'm trying to do? Nigga, I'm pregnant. I mean, by who though? <laughs> by who? By, by you. It, I'm a, in my uh, in my came from Miss Society. It ain't mine. <laughs> it ain't mine. <laughs> mine. Yeah. Oh so we go. We go wrap this episode up of bars and beyond. No. Uh, another dope one, some some great stuff. So yeah. comment. We got two great topics we jumped into. So I know y'all got a lot to say about that. So tune in next week. We'll be right back at you same time, same place. It's Demarco, uh, D E M A R C O two seven five. Mm -hmm. I am Courtney Levitt. Make sure you guys go follow me on the gram at Courtney Levitt L A V E T T E underscore. Download the app and tune in each and every Tuesday. 
right eight p.m. Oh, hit right the su here. subscribe button. This is YouTube, so oh yeah, yeah hit the right. subscribe button. I'll answer. We out. It's bars and beyond. The stars is aligned. Sports, relationships, and rap. They said it would be hard to combine. Part in the shine. Pick them out. We find the largest decline.